Hello and welcome to another system design video and in this video we'll be covering caching. Now caching is used as a way to speed up access to frequently required resources by storing these resources in a temporary storage area to allow faster access. Caching is used in almost every layer of computing. In hardware for example you have various layers of cache memory, you have layer 1 cache memory which is the CPU cache memory, then you have a layer 2 cache memory and finally you would have the regular RAM random access memory. You also have caching in operating systems such as caching various kernel extensions or application files and you have caching in web browsers as well as they cache web pages to decrease load times of websites. We'll be taking a look at caching in the web applications. A typical web application architecture will look a bit like this. We will have a database which writes data to disk memory so it's secure but slow then we would have some sort of server-side API to expose this data and we'll have a pretty front end to present this data to the user. Now if multiple users keep requesting for the same data your system would have to read from the disk for every request. This could be very inefficient if we have large volume of data in your database or a complicated query. To give it some numbers let's say your database read takes about 100 milliseconds on average to process a complex SQL query. To make this system more efficient we can add an application server cache. So we can add an in-memory store like Redis for example alongside our application servers. Now the first time a request is made a call will have to be made to the database to process the query. This is known as cache miss. With a cache miss before giving the result back to the user the result will be saved in the cache and then returned. Now the second time the user makes the same request the application will check your cache first to see if the result for that request is cached. If it is then the result will be returned from the in-memory store. This is known as a cache hit since the complex query didn't need to be processed again the response time the second time is a lot less like one millisecond for example. Awesome but what if we add multiple servers in the mix and a load balancer? This will still work but you will end up with a lot of cache misses which isn't that great. To solve this we can have a distributed cache or a global cache. With a distributed cache each node will have a part of a whole cache space and then using consistent hashing function each request can be routed to where the cached request could be found. Distributed cache is a great way to increase cache memory by simply adding a new node which increases the overall cache space. With a global cache you would have a single cache store where every request goes to that one instance of the cache. Having a global cache between the application servers and the data store is a common way to implement a global cache. With this implementation the global cache is responsible for updating the cache. If we have any cache misses by requesting the data store and using a cache eviction policy. More about this near the end. A global cache is great but it can be a bottleneck for the whole system with large amounts of requests unless you have a special hardware able to handle all the requests very quickly since you only have this one instance that's handling all the requests. Another kind of cache is the content distribution network CDN. CDNs are used where a large amount of static content is served by a website. This can be CSS files, HTML files, JavaScript files or photos, videos etc. Now CDNs work the same way as other caches where if the content does not exist in the cache then the backend servers are called for that file and stored in the cache for future requests. Okay so caching is great but what about the data that is constantly being updated as well? How do we keep the data in your cache coherent with the data from your source of truth, the database? For that we have cache invalidation. There are three different cache invalidation schemes. You can write through a cache, so when you update your data, you update both the cache data as well as the database at the same time before sending a complete response back. This way you reduce the chances of losing your new data, but the problem you face is that write time now increases since you have to update two places for a single update request. Another invalidation scheme is writing around a cache. So similar to the write through you write to the database but in this case you don't update the cache. So you reduce your write latency compared to write through but now until your cache data is refreshed your application will return out of date data. 
And lastly, you can write back a cache. Here, you would only update the cache and return the completed response straight away, keeping latency low and high throughput. The problem with this is until you schedule your database to be updated, the system is at risk of data loss. So now we have coherent data, but our cache can't be forever growing. We need policies in place to remove data out of the cache too, and this is known as cache eviction. Some cache eviction policies include first in first out, where the cache evicts the first block accessed first without regards to how often it was accessed. The opposite of this would be last in first out. Another policy may be the least recently used, where the least recently used items are evicted first, and in contrast you can have the most recently used being evicted first as well. There's also the least frequently used, which counts how often an item is needed. Those that are used least often are discarded first. And lastly, you have random replacement. So we randomly select a candidate item and discard it to make space whenever necessary. And that's all for caching. As always, if the video helped, help me help you by liking, commenting and subscribing. And I'll catch you in the next system design video.